guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler-free review for Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Spinning Silver is an adult fantasy standalone that is a Rumpelstiltskin reimagining retelling. This is a multiple POV story that centers around a small village and the main character, although there's a kind of a lot of main characters, but one of the main characters is Miriam and she has this ability, whether it's a metaphor or not, to turn silver into gold. And this causes the fairy lord in this world to kind of take notice of her and it also has an impact on a lot of different people in this world both in her village and outside of it and how all of them interconnect and how her actions affect everyone going forward. It's kind of a convoluted tale and I'll get into that in a second. So first off I'm gonna talk about the world building. This does kind of take place within Naomi Novik's kind of like multiverse I feel of like uprooted and stuff but it's not there's no overlap it's not part of the series this is a standalone but just like with uprooted I did feel like this had really good world building I think Naomi Novik does world building well she does these kinds of like stories really well she does these eastern european kind of stories and this takes place mostly in like winter and I definitely got that winter feeling and just like the feeling of the village and all of that. So all of the world building, like the magic elements, I always feel like Naomi Novik does really well and I enjoyed that. And next I'm gonna talk about our characters. This is a fairly character driven story and I almost feel like this is kind of opposite of Uprooted. I know a lot of people had a problem with the, like how fast paced the plot felt in Uprooted. I personally didn't because it's one of my favorite books of all time. But a lot of people had that complaint. I almost feel like this slows that down and pays a lot of attention to characters. And again, this is a multiple POV story. And all of the characters' voices are very different. But I will say that this does jump around in POVs a lot. They are not labeled, although there are like page breaks or chapter breaks between characters. They're not labeled. Sometimes you're like, okay, who am I following? And there are a lot of characters. So at first I thought it was just gonna be like Miriam and a couple of the other characters, maybe three total. You have kind of those three that it does revolve around, or even just two that I would say it revolves around. And then you have some of these other characters kind of dipping in. So you have all these POVs, and I felt that I got a little bit convoluted. I felt like there was too many threads going, and there were some POVs that I just didn't like reading from at all, which I know happens with multiple POV stories, but that especially happens when you have too many POVs. So there are definitely character voices that I just didn't like. One in particular is from a, like a smaller child's POV, and it's written well because it's written in like run-on simple sentences, but it just grated on my nerves to read. And I found myself struggling with this book. This book took me a while to read for an author who I love and adore and for a book that I was anticipating for a while. And part of that was because school was so crazy and I had a lot going on and I just couldn't sit down and focus. But also it just was like, it wasn't really going anywhere for me. And there were so many characters that it was following that I didn't care about. <laughs> like I really, from, from the get go, I only really cared about Miriam. That's it. And then towards the last like, 30% I started caring about one of the other characters as well but it took like nearly the entire book to get there and otherwise I was like I don't I don't care and I still feel having finished the book that I would have liked the book to mostly just have been in Miriam's perspective she is who I wanted to be with her story is who I wanted to like follow and the other ones could have fallen away and I would have been fine but I understand why they were in there and some of the other things that were being explored through them and other themes through them but just as a as a reading experience and as an enjoyment level thing, I really just wanted Miriam. So that sucks. Also, I will comment on the romance element of this, which there real there basically is none. So that was another thing that I think was just kind of an expectations thing. There's barely any romance in Uprooted, but the romance that you do get is like amazing for me. It's like five to ten percent is all of the book like like literally probably like five percent but those little snippets feed my soul so I kept waiting for those kinds of things to happen in here and it didn't and that's not necessarily the book's fault because it wasn't ever really promised but I just assumed because it's the same author and it's fairy tale retelling and, it, and it's just the expectations that you bring into a book and, and that kind of thing so I get that that's not really the book's fault but I still was left just like wanting because I just kept waiting for that and then like some kind of like banter or something or like push and pull and I didn't really get that. Now I know people are going to mention like oh there's sort of a Hades and Persephone element and um sort of but like not. It's sort of a reverse Hades and Persephone and you don't actually get the like relationship of that because 
of the character dynamics really. Like it, it doesn't give me that feeling. Yes, it's set up with some of those story elements kind of and some of that, but like it's not really like I wouldn't put this on like a Hades and Persephone recommendations list. Like it's it's a very weak tie and it's really just like a trope that's in a lot of fairy tales and I wouldn't necessarily call it like Hades and Persephone specific. So there's that. And I did kind of think there might be some Hades and Persephone stuff, which again, this is just me dooming myself to disappointment because I should never go in thinking there might be Hades, Persephone, Beauty and the Beast, any of that. Aruda did Beauty and the Beast pretty well, if you're going for that kind of thing and you haven't read it up yet. What I did really like with the characters is that Miriam and her family, they are Jewish, and this element is brought in a lot throughout the story. There's discussions of microaggressions and just communities, and all of that is brought in in this fantasy setting, and that was really interesting and really well done, and there's stuff about religion and all of that really well woven into the story that I found really interesting and really compelling. And this really is a story about family, and Again, it's that part is done really well. It's just more of an, my own expectations thing. So I really enjoyed that. And the like there's found family elements in here and just the importance of different families and melding families and what families mean and responsibility to families and all of that. That was really good. And I really enjoyed that element of the story. Lastly, let me talk about the plot. Again, I felt like this was really, really slow. And because you had so many POVs, it just made the plot a little bit disjointed. Sometimes you had the same event being told in two characters' perspectives, so you'd almost would have to li relive certain events, and that would be a little redundant. And it just took a lot of time to get where it was going. And even in the beginning, it just took me a long time to kind of get invested because it was just like taking so long to get to the point, in my opinion. So again, it's just a little more meandering, not very like plot driven. And then it kind of has that thing at the end of some of these books that just happens when you have a meandering plot. At the very end, there's like a lot of action happening. And there were some things at the end that would have liked to get fleshed out more. I would have liked to have seen these events instead of just being like a paragraph, like, here's what they did. And I'm like, I wanted to see that. Why couldn't we have had more of that instead of the stuff at the beginning that was boring me? So yeah, I definitely expected it to grip me more just based on how Uprooted gripped me and based on how some of Damanowicz's other books have gripped me, but ultimately this one just left me a little more wanting with the plot and the characters and such, which is disappointing because this was one of my most highly anticipated books of the entire year. So ultimately, while I liked a lot of things that it did, there's also a lot of things it did that I didn't like, so I end up giving Spinning Silver three out of five stars. While I'm sure this is going to disappoint a lot of you, I am not going to be doing a discussion video on this book because Spinning Silver is our BookNet Fest book club pick, one of them, and I am on the book club panel at the event discussing it, so I don't want to be redundant or give away anything from the panel that I might talk about as far as like spoilery details. So we do plan on posting that panel when it's done, and I will try to remember to link the video down below once it actually is posted and everything, but if you are attending the panel and you're attending the event, you can hear all of my thoughts live and stuff, but again, I just don't want to do redundancies. So you will hear more of my thoughts, spoilery thoughts, in-depth thoughts, discussion with other book club panelists at BookNet Fest. So comment down below, let me know your thoughts on Spinning Silver. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.